Welcome to the Indigrid Q1 FY 2019 earnings presentation. This is our fifth quarterly analyst and investor presentation and we are very proud and happy to report yet another strong quarter on the back of predictable and consistent performance. I will just give you a quick run through once again of our business, our assets and our vision. As you know Indigrid was the second INVIT in India and the first in the power sector. It is India's only power transmission yield platform, which is in the business of owning interstate high-voltage power transmission assets, which are operating assets with no greenfield risk and no traffic risk. These assets deliver stable, predictable and sustainable distribution to unit holders. Indigrid will grow its distribution through value accretive acquisitions from the strong pipeline that it has from sponsor assets as well as third-party acquisitions. As we stand today Indigrid has an asset under management of about 5,200 crore rupees over 5 project SPVs as we can see on slide number 5. About 3,300 circuit kilometers of line, 6,000 MVA of transformation capacity over 13 lines and 2 substations, it has AAA rated status across its SPVs and the trust and it has unique feature amongst all infrastructure asset classes in India which is perceptual ownership. There is no transfer clause and these assets will remain with Indigrid in perpetuity as compared to all of other asset classes. Our current assets have about 33 years of residual life and of go. First then our tail period beyond that for future use. Moving to page 6, Indigrid has a bold vision of being the most admired yield vehicle in Asia. We plan to do this through a strong focus on delivery, transparency and governance. In terms of numbers, we aim to have assets under management of about 300 billion Indian rupees, which is 30,000 crore rupees in the next four years. This will take us to about $4 to $4.5 billion of assets under management and will put us in the league of all the major global yield players and yield investors in the world. We plan to deliver on our guidance of distribution per unit each quarter and we plan to deliver on a growth year on year and finally we believe in best in class corporate governance when it comes to management and operation of this platform. On page 7 we have the basic fundamental pillars of our proposition to investors. Our portfolio, including our OFO assets from our sponsor, allow us to grow the portfolio to three times of the current size and we expect to achieve an IRR of about 12% based on 100 rupees issue price, by the time we are able to drop all our current ROFO assets. The business model is highly stable, based on availability-based cash flows where we get our entire tariff based on asset availability which has no correlation with the power flow in the asset. Our counterparty is very strong. We collect our tariff through Power Grid, which is the collection agent and manages a pool of tariffs across the country. The cash flows are annuity-like and are very long-term in nature. As I mentioned we get 35 years concession life. They are AAA rated and as I mentioned we are looking for a 12% portfolio IRR in the near term. The power transmission industry has always been a favorite amongst infrastructure, asset owners and investors. It enjoys structural stability and structural growth especially in emerging markets. India always had a bold vision for its power sector and in the current government the vision only gets bolder. The plan is to have power to every household by 2022 and about 250 gigawatts of renewable energy. This entire plan calls for a transmission vision or transmission expenditure of anywhere from $40 to $60 billion. India is the largest investor on electric vehicles in the developing world after China. This will only take up the electricity demand further, and will have a further impact in demand and transmission lines. We are expecting the next five years to have tremendous growth, in terms of new projects being bid out. We believe Indigrid will be the best platform to consolidate these assets, and grow not only its assets, its portfolio, but also the return for investor. Our sponsor already has a strong 30% market share of all projects that have been awarded so far and it has the best track record of executing project. The most number of projects in the country in the TBCB model, which places it very well to continue to benefit from this outlook for the sector. 
the sponsor has 7 ASA TS available at the moment for further dropping in, and as mentioned these assets alone can grow the AUM of IndieGrid by 3 times and beyond this IndieGrid has shown the capability to acquire third party assets. We have announced and signed definitive agreements for the first asset and we believe that there will be a continuous consolidation in the sector, and IndieGrid will continue to look for value creative opportunities in the transmission space. IndieGrid has a robust corporate governance framework regulated by SEBI in the form of an independent trustee, independent and highly experienced board which have experience of running such instruments globally. IndieGrid has a strong management team, which has probably unparalleled experience of not only running operating transmission assets, but also managing yield vehicles in India. Moving on to financial performance, we had another strong quarter with a strong financial and operating performance this quarter. Our EBITDA was up by 10% to 1.45 billion rupees primarily on the back of the acquisitions we made in the last quarter. We received CERC order for one of our projects, BDTCL, which will result in the tariff increase of about 0.69%, which will be accretive to us. As per guidance we are going ahead with a distribution of 3 rupees per unit this quarter, this will be paid entirely as interest to unit holders. After paying this we are also reaffirming our FY 2019 DPU guidance at 12 rupees, which is 3 rupees per quarter for next TH re-quarters. We are on track to complete the previously announced third-party acquisition of Patron Asset, which Prutik just described and we have received regulatory approval for the same. We are very well positioned to capitalize on the strong growth fundamental, Prutik described about the sector and the tailwinds, which allows us to look at more opportunities in the sector to grow. On page number 10, is our financial performance snapshot. As you can see, we have consistently grown our revenue as well as EBITDA with respect to the operating performance as well as acquisition of assets. Over last four quarters the total distributed amount is 11 rupees and 64 pesos per unit, which is substantially higher than what we guided at the time of IPO and we could achieve this by acquiring the first set of acquisitions, much ahead of the schedule. On slide 11, is the EBITDA to distribution bridge with 1.458 billion rupees of ETIDA, we had an interest on external debt of 329 million rupees. We repaid the debt of 156 million rupees, there was a working capital change of 176 million rupees which led to about 797 million rupees NDCF at the SPV level. Our interest at the Indie Grid level on loan was 206 million rupees and we used up about 260 million rupees cash from balance to meet the NDCF at 851 million rupees and we are distributing that entire amount this quarter, which translates to 3 rupees per share distribution. Coming to slide 12, which show our operating performance. We have presented our historical availability tie on the chart on the left hand side, which is yearly and asset by asset, as you can see from FY 2016 to 2018, every single asset has delivered maximum incentive by maintaining much higher availability than stipulated. The Q1 availability is also pretty much in line with that and we are confident that we will achieve 100% incentive by the end of this financial year. Slide 13 describes the debt profile with which we have financed our portfolio. We have maintained AAA rating by all the three top rating agencies in India. Our net debt to AUM ratio is 44% at the quarter end. We have used diversified sources of funding varying from a bond to a bank loan to an ECB, which is fully hedged and fixed our interest rates and achieved the weighted average cost of borrowing at 8.3%. The Q1 availability is also pretty much in line with that and we are confident that we will achieve 100% incentive by the end of this financial year. Slide 13 describes the debt profile with which we have financed our portfolio. We have maintained AAA rating by all the three top rating agencies in India. Our net debt to AUM ratio is 44% at the quarter end. We have used diversified sources of funding varying from a bond to a bank loan to an ECB, 
which is fully hedged and fixed our interest rates and achieved the weighted average cost of borrowing at 8.3%. With all these and the different instruments altogether we have weighted average maturity of our borrowing at approximately 8 years and we continue to usly evaluate cheaper and longer dated options to ensure that we diversify the funding and look for increasing the average maturity of portfolio. On the next section, which is primarily going beyond this quarter, we have communicated our growth strategy. These are the seven assets from the sponsor, depicted with size as well as potential date of completion of these assets and as Prutik mentioned, as we look to grow we would continue to look at these assets as well as third party assets for achieving our goal for growth and achieving 12% IRR. On slide 16 we are showing how we have grown the portfolio since IPO till now. As of now we have reached IRR of approximately 10% after acquiring the third party asset and there is a clearly structured roadmap for us to acquire subsequent ROFO assets to ensure that we achieve 12% portfolio IRR from sponsor assets. On slide 17, the depiction is in terms of DPU or how would it grow with each set of acquisition and over a period of time. It also showcases the need to acquire third-party assets to grow the AUM beyond the ROFO assets at different point in time. This remains as indicative DPU, however, the curve depicts the growth of the distribution per unit over a period of 20 years. We at Indigrid are committed towards delivering on all promises we made and surpassing those. I think it has been just over a year since the IPO. We have been able to beat our guidance on distribution. We have been able to prepone our growth and have also completed one third party acquisition, which is a sign of things to come in the future. We remain very confident and upbeat about not only Indie Grid, but also in general about INVIT as a product. We believe that the country will be using this product more effectively, not only to help private companies raise capital, but also for government assets to be monetized and to reduce the fiscal deficit of the government, so we believe that this product is here to stay. It is going to do well. We expect issuances this year and we at Indigrid are focused on our own operations and strategy. We will continue to remain in close touch with you and provide information from time to time. If you would like to know more about the company, please visit our website www.indigrid.co.in. Thank you.